up looking at Macon team that's got a lot of speed and, a, and maybe a bit of a younger Trinidad team that hasn't got a lot of experience. Talking to the Jamaicans yesterday, and they said they, they like to spread the ball and be very patient and then run hard angles when they see the break. So it's a lot of side to side, almost like soccer, you know, just waiting for the moment and then they spring the trap and shoot the gap. They have a lot of fast athletes, both sides do, but especially Jamaicans. Hopefully we see that Jamaican flair, that Jamaican speed today. So Trinidad and Tobago in red on the field playing left to right and they will kick off. That's well taken by Orlando Jones of Jamaica, wearing solid colors there and uh, nice heat soaking colors as well. And look at that speed for Jamaica. Quashi trying to make a tackle there. Jamaica looking for the support. And that's gonna be number 12, Donald Walters. And just like that, 21 seconds in, we have our first score. And that's gotta be an uh-oh moment for TNT. Let's see the replay here. Lovely start for Jamaica. That's number 11, Ronaldo Wade. Patient, patient, finding the gap, opening it up is 12, Donald Walters. That's a great start, that's a great try for Jamaica. Yeah, and it just uh, puts their authority on this match early on that, uh, like our uh, Jamaican Olympians that we watched last month, uh, we're in for a track meet here today. And the conversion is good by number nine, Oshani Eddy. And he's got the uh, nice little uh, rooster tail, rooster comb of uh, color on his hair there. Yeah, he's so sort of he's the, easy the to pick out. Flair of the team. He's one of those guys who's the organizer, important for him, again, to distribute that ball in front of the players today and let those speedsters run onto it, use their speed to their advantage. And that kick is almost going backwards there. <laughs> Only went about a meter, went very high, but not the way they wanted. Trinidad and Tobago will have the uh, indirect penalty at half. And when you give those away, it gives the other team that attack at half, which leaves you a lot of options. Trinidad and Tobago taking advantage of it now. Agbula Silverthorne, he's the pace man for TNT. Will he have the legs to do it? Yes, he gets across the line. And he just saw white line fever, knew he didn't have anyone in support, and he went for it. Great individual try there from halfway. Lovely individual effort by Silverthorne. Again, we saw that in the last game too. Teams are sort of, we'll see in the replay here, but teams are sort of letting that middle option go right up the middle, right up the guts, and look at the speed on both teams, but wonderful finish, reaches over, fantastic try. That's gonna get their confidence back. O'Shane Eddy just legging it back there to try and get a hand on Silverthorne, too little, too late. Uh, but you also, you know, you're, you're, you're making a statement about uh, do this at your peril next time because I've got the gas to get to you. Conversion no good, seven to five, so a bit of an important misconversion in this game two minutes in could come back to haunt the Trinidad and Tobago team. The restart from Silverthorne. Oh, a great flip back as number three, Everton Richards, looked like he was gonna receive that for Jamaica. Instead, Trinidad and Tobago came away with it. Advantage being played. Yeah, good call from the referee. Jamaica interfering with the base play. Trinidad and Tobago looking to take advantage. Quick tap ball here, Anthony Lopez gets that out. Now that's Silverthorne trying to find that ball. He is immediately tracked down as uh, Joseph Quashi flings it back to Silverthorne. And here's TNT just withdrawing and giving up plenty of territory. They've gone back 25 meters, 30 meters now. Now the kick through by number 10, Joseph Shea of Jamaica. But TNT staying on side, but they, they uh, did not roll away in the tackle. Penalty against them and quick tap from Jamaica will put them under more pressure. Ball shaken loose from that tackle. O'Shane Eddy looking for a spot out wide. And now he gets that ball spinning back the other direction is Andrew Fong. You see both teams trying to open it up now. Orlando Jones in the gap. Jones, he pulls away from a tackler. He'll be wrapped up now. Stays on his feet, drives for a couple of extra meters. Jamaica desperately wanting to get that ball back, but counter ruckman at Trinidad is bringing it back their side. They've done a good job, but they've committed everyone at the breakdown, only two guys out wide. Penalty against Jamaica, and now Silverthorne will do the quick tap, and wow, a pa pass to Philip Rogers, bouncing by the in goal area, and he'll just opt to regroup and kick to touch, but he hasn't found touch. My goodness, Joseph Shea now gathering that in for Jamaica. Everton Richards, he goes out wide. Orlando Jones now steps in and out of a couple of tackles and he's lost his shorts down around his ankles almost. And now it's uh, number nine, O'Shane Eddy, 
Trinidad coming away with that chip through by Eddie. And now another penalty from Jamaica, and they need to maybe calm down and get themselves organized. This is a great opportunity to take a line out. This, what was that, two minutes nonstop action, the beauty of sevens. Again, both teams trying to open it up now. We can see, trying to test each other. The ball moving from one side to the other. Wonderful athleticism. Trinidad and Tobago trying to build some base play here. Taking, opting for the lineup because it slows things down. For our Canadian fans, that was like a really long hockey shift, you know, instead of one minute shift, that was like two minutes of just grinding. And uh, these players on both sides are kind of had to have a line out and take a breath of air here. Credit to both teams when you get up, everyone gets tired and goes. Uh, one minute, two minute, neither team backing down. So number four, Philip Rogers coming off the field for Trinidad and Tobago, replaced by Kelson Figaro. And Jamaica's come away with that line out. And just a quick link up outside to Donald Walters, our earlier try score. They do the switch back inside. Jamaica finding a clear path through, and that's going to be Ronaldo Wade with a great try on the switch. A little bit of a show and go here. Lovely finish by. Ronaldo Wade, and again we see Donald Walters and Wade hook up. Let's see the replay here. Bringing it across is Donald Walters, sucking both players in. Lovely step off his outside foot. A little flare for the finish. Oh, we're all right with that. And that was the real key was Walters took out two players as he was driving to his right, and that suddenly opened the gate for a Ronaldo Wade try there because no one was there to take him on. Yeah, something that's important in sevens is to take the ball with pace, attack the Drive defender, the take their time and space away, yeah. 11, and then Ronaldo shift it Wade. to a player coming off his line. O'Shane Eddy adds the extras, and that makes it 14 to 5 for Jamaica. Six minutes gone in this uh, first half. Neither team can let it up at this point. Still a lot of time left. Yeah, it's certainly not out of reach for Trinidad and Tobago, but. You know, the example of the attempted clearance kick that went straight up, that's putting your team under even more pressure. You might as well have held on to that and gotten tackled and retained possession. High kickoff, Trinidad and Tobago weren't able to handle it, so Joseph Shea gets to it. Now chipped through by Orlando Jones. It's a kick over the top in actual fact, and that will go over the dead ball line. So uh, that will be a scrum back in that situation. Kick I believe it will be a kick 22 for Trinidad and Tobago. Why am I thinking scrum back is maybe from a penalty kick or a kick That's over right, the dead ball it. line? Here. So the Hooter is gone for halftime here at yeah. on Rugby Park Trinidad and Tobago though could eat up the next three minutes if they don't knock this ball on. The ball is unplayable and so that will be halftime. They won't get the scrum. And so the score remains 14 to five for Jamaica at halftime. And I would say Trinidad and Tobago don't have to be holding their heads down too much, but they've got a, a lot to handle with this Jamaican team and their speed. Jamaica is very fast and they're starting to connect. They're getting their uh, number nine, Eddie O'Shea, I'm sorry, O'Shea Eddie rather. He's connecting his passes. They're moving the ball around, taking off their lines and they're taking advantage of their speed right now. Now we're going to listen into Jamaica getting some instructions here. Not early. So the same guy have early. Then I have no reason to be angry about going to Eddie, Eddie's sweeping. So come up in the bench. Push me up. Lock. Push me up. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's your job. Get here closer. Lock this, lock this piece. If there's the ball over there, you are 10 meters, 10 meters away from the, the line. All right. Four, so you four, get four. 40 meters as, as you go by. Show time here, coach. Push me no, up. No, I'm not going to talk from there. Okay. Okay. Push me up, push right. me up. Yeah, well you done. guys do the work. You guys do the work. All right? Play the ball game. Laugh early. Get in the field. Push in mind. Push me up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So lots of instructions being imparted by the coach for Jamaica. Yeah, we can hear the Jamaican coach saying, once you've made your break, make sure that you're supporting that player. Very crucial. Trinidad and Tobago, uh, one of the smaller rugby unions in the Caribbean. I mean, they're, they're all relatively small compared to, say, the U.S. and Canada in terms of player participation, but uh, fairly fiercely supported by their players. And, uh, you know, they don't want to embarrass their side. And they know that people are watching back home, which is a bit of a treat because they don't always get to be seen online. Thanks to Rogers Television for allowing us to uh, 
stream that signal around the Caribbean and other parts of Canada as the Jamaican players carried off the field with uh, what appears to be a serious leg injury. And that is number 10, Joseph Shea. I don't know if he just blew a hammy going out at halftime there. Yeah, they want to put some ice on that. You can see the trainer's working on it now. So that's Anthony Lopez getting that for Trinidad and Tobago, but they, they left their feet at the breakdown, and so it's going to be quick tap ball by Andrew Hilton. They spin it wide, Mohento Thompson managing to get a nice spin pass out there. Patient Thompson gets it back now, and he's taken down hard. He's driven back two or three meters. And now Shane Eddy linking up, and you can see the play calling. And now this is the kick we were talking about that should be a kick to the wing, but instead it goes directly to Stefan Cooksami. And he is a problem player for Jamaica here because he has been known to go the length of the field. He's got a bit of pace in those boots. Trinidad and Tobago doing a nice job of keeping that ball alive. They're moving the ball up the field. They're not panicking like they maybe did a little bit in the Absolutely. first half. Yep, you bet. Finding the gap now. That is Stefan Cooksami. Offload, looking for options. That's Joseph Kwashi. Gets it out to Lopez. Figaro, wide cutout pass. Now things starting to happen for Trinidad and Tobago. James Phillip, he finds Stefan Cooksami. You can see on the outside, Trinidad and Tobago just a little hesitant from running around the Jamaicans. They know their speed, so they're trying to work that ball back off the sideline with switches and inside passes. Figaro finds Silverthorne, and now he's coming in to help Ruck here. Three guys at the breakdown now. They don't want to do much more than that because they'll take away their offensive opportunity. Ball put to ground, and the pass interrupted, but nothing wrong with that. A bit of a basketball pass out to Kwashi from Lopez. Pat goes the other way now, and here's some from O'Shane Eddy. And he is bundled in touch before he can do any damage. Fortunate, fortunate for Trinidad. Ran out of bounds. So the assistant referee advising those players can't be in the channel to block the ball. It's not like an inbound basketball pass. That's right. It's a you line out. The referee saying, I want a little bit of room. Ooh, give me some separation. Now, you can mark a player if they're thinking about quick, but they still got to be in five meters. The whistle comes before that ball was uh, going in. So referee saying there, I'd like to see two meters between you. Again, trying to open up that gap. As it, when you're a player in that line out, you're anxious. Come Sometimes back. you can jump into that hole no, prematurely. Lopez will throw this in for Trinidad and Tobago. Figaro is the target, but they can't find it. Jamaica now coming away with good inside step there. Offload by Everton Richards, but it goes into touch. Figaro looking, thinking quick ball. And boy, that is a ill-advised line-out ball as Jamaica up quick. Silverthorne now, another pass to no one as James Phillip gathers that in. And maybe something, you know, you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet and something could happen here. Silverthorne, he is doing a stutter step, trying to get outside his outside cover. He's shaking off one tackle and still going. And boy, he has got some fitness going on there. Phillip passing it back inside. Lopez drops the ball, all that good work. And it's the one tired guy that is, his skill sets are just dropping a bit. And I bet you start to see some players moving around on the Trinidad and Tobago bench as they look to change him. Yeah, coaches can't stand that when it's sloppy play, dropping the ball on, all that good work. And to lose it all for something like that, it's very frustrating. O'Shane Eddy is replaced by Odell Hyman. <laughs> see a replay here. Ooh. Bit of a shoulder charge by Figaro as he went after that ball and bit of acting going on maybe by O'Shea and Eddie there trying to draw a bigger penalty than was maybe uh, possibly coming. That's it, forgot it's not soccer, we're playing rugby here. That's right, the, the big flare. It looked like he was suffering from the vapors. Ball coming out quick for Jamaica. That's uh, Lopez trying to make up for his earlier drop ball, putting in some tackles. Trinidad Tobago needs to drift across and cut off the lane there. Quashi engaging now, number eight, Kenneth Walker. Jamaica trying to put that ball to the ground to set up the ruck. It finally comes down. Flip pass from Hyman, linking up through Fong. Now chip up the middle, no one home, no sweeper there. It's going to be up to Joseph Quashi to gather that in. He'll be under immediate pressure and didn't want to do that. And he can't play with that ball on the ground or he'll get a penalty. And now, Great bit of footballing and a pass outside from Everton Richards. And Jamaica will have a try on here through Odell Hyman. Possibly he gets caught just at the line. Crowd appreciating that defensive play. 
because that looked like that was going to be a five for sure. And now a referee calling a penalty. And what was the penalty there, Rob? Yeah, referee saying hands back. He didn't like. We'll see a replay here. Look at this effort. Lovely effort from Trinidad and Tobago. That's number six, James Phillips. And that's yep. resulted in a card against uh, Phillip. Yeah, so. I'm a little bit surprised about the call. I thought it was a knock-on from Jamaica. I thought it was great defense. But, you know, sometimes it's the referee's there on the spot. He needs to make a call. So the team that could use it uh, the least, Jamaica, is now going to have a man advantage for two minutes as Phillip cools his heels. And they're just as easy as that. With the extra space out there, Jamaica scores their third try. To bring it up to 19-5 with the conversion to come. Very tough, tough try for Trinidad and, Trinidad and Tobago. We'll see the replay here. At this point, it's just a little dummy, lovely offload and score. And it's actually remarkable, went through three sets of hands in such a short space there for uh, that easy try. And it was a heads up play by Jamaica. We're down here at center half just before that. Uh, they didn't have anything on. They weren't well uh, spread. They didn't have any depth. So what does he do? He kicks the ball back, sees there's no sweeper. It's a good heads up play and they reap the rewards of that. What an athletic play by uh, Number three, uh, or sorry, uh, Philip, so James Philip, number six, that got the yellow card to track down and make that tackle and ultimately, you know, result in a penalty. But it was still an athletic play that fans here appreciated because when you're, you're mostly used to seeing the big speed, the big defensive plays really stand out. Fans definitely got to their feet on that one. Never give up attitudes. Wonderful to see. Everton Richards will kick off for Jamaica. That's a good kick. Just what they want. Taken by Figaro, but it was supposed to be Figaro. He dropped it. Silverthorne now, he's wrapped up. And now penalty not releasing the ball. Or probably not releasing the tackle, it was the ball, but. Orlando Jones spinning it out wide for Jamaica now. Remember, they have a man advantage for two minutes, so this is when they're going to really start throwing it around. Jones. Odell Hyman gets to it, but now Trinidad and Tobago, Joseph Quashi, they're going to spin it out wide and see if they can make something happen here. Around the corner, that's number eight, Keishan Walliler. He's come on, and he does not have the gas to follow this ball up. That's the full-time hooter we've heard, and Jamaica will be happy to just kick that into touch and go into the semifinal. They'll play Canada in one of two semifinals coming up. So that means we'll have the U.S. taking on Mexico in the other semifinal. And uh, that is the final score, 19 to five for the Jamaicans. So coming up next in the intermission, we'll